Sakpase. Hey, what's up, world? Welcome to another episode of the Team Sakpase podcast. My name is Glad. And I'm your boy, Rob. We are your favorite Team Sakpase podcast show where we interview great entrepreneurs from all sectors of industry. And remember, subscribe, share, comment below. Subscribe, share, comment below. No doubt. Now, guys, we are back at the Brooklyn Bank. Shout out to our brother, Mr. Jude Bernard. Yes. Um, today, we're talking about everything business credit. And uh, that's right. If you have a business and you want to acquire business credit, we have the man here who's going to be sharing with us how to do that. If you want $10,000, $30,000, up to $50,000 or more, this is the guy. His favorite quote, success has receipts. Yes. Absolutely. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Big shout out to our brother, uh, <laughs> Mr. Herman Dulce of Bella Sloan Enterprises, better known as Haitian CEO on yes, social media. Yes, yes, yes My yes, brother. My bro. Thanks for you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. No doubt, man. This is a blessing, man. I'm honored to... Um, to be on the podcast. Um, I thank you very much for this opportunity, wow. man. And I'm here to to bless the people and, and give some gems. Yeah, no man. doubt. Talk man. about the journey. No doubt. We're gonna wow. talk about how was your week, bro? Because I know you're all over the place. I'm all over the place, bro. <laughs> the, the 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 week has been good. Um uh you guys are hearing it first. So um, I'm writing three books right now at the same time. So I'm doing another business credit book, nice. and I'm actually writing two um children's books. Right. One, my my daughters, each of my daughters going to co-sign each of them. So Bella's writing a book on business credit for children and Olivia's writing one on credit. That's yeah. Smart. So wow. so we got to yes. we got to teach them young, teach them, teach them young. the game young. Because right. I learned right. it late. So if we teach them young, then it's it's um, it's ABCs right. to them. So yeah, yeah, and you already have a book, right? I already startup? have a book. Yeah. yeah. Called Startup. Yeah. Startup, yeah. Yep. To find it on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. OK. Inside wow. the secrets to building business credit. Yeah. Ooh. Congrats. Yeah, thank Congrats. you, man. That's thank big. you. Thank you. You have two you have two daughters. Two daughters, Bella Sloan and Olivia Monroe. Yeah. My heart beats, man. Only wow. things I've done right in this world. Yeah. <laughs> I messed up on everything. I think I did good with them. <laughs> well, yeah. You also doing good with some business credit yeah, too. Okay. Not, I was just gonna say, not, yeah, exactly. you know, let's not exactly. downplay that. We're gonna talk about that one. But, um, so so born in Brooklyn, raised in Philly. Born talk in Brooklyn, about your, Philly. talk about your journey. So the journey is has got to go back to the parents. Um, mm -hmm. my, my namesake, Herman Dulce Sr., my father, and Felina Dulce, um, came to Brooklyn in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. um, I came through 81, no <laughs> right? Um, 40 years old. Glad to see that. And then, um, you know, the journey guys are every Caribbean. They just want what's better for their children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we was living um, at that time. It was my brother and my sister. So it was five of us in a one bedroom. I'm not going to give you the sob story like we were broken. We were poor. Right, right. I felt rich. I didn't know what poor was mm -hmm. until I saw the other side. I was like, oh, I ain't got that. Right. But <laughs> right. but we was good, though. But my parents were like, no, more. Mm. So um, back then, um, the world was very different. Mm -hmm. You can save ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 if you work hard and you grind. Right now, it's very hard to save that type of money on a working class. Mm -hmm. So they saved 20000 My parents would tell me the story. They put a down payment. They bought a house. Um, in Philly, Mount Airy. Um, and when we moved, because, you know, you know, Haitians, we're a community. So we all in Brooklyn. And it's like, I moved to Philly two hours away, but everybody here. And even then in Brooklyn, things are still expensive. It's like, yo, we got a we got a three bedroom, three bath in Philly for 80,000 wow. with a backyard. We out. <laughs> right. 80 K, bro. Wow. 80 K. Um, 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 side note, that house is worth 300,000 now. Right, we'll get to that later. Yeah, right? definitely, we'll definitely get to that. You know, over. passing Absolutely. down what generational wealth. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's how since three hundred. So we moved to Philly, um, and now everybody. Uh, my sister had her own room. Me and my brother shared a room, and um, um, Philly, Philly was amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was a good decision for my parents to move us there. Um, and then, um, you know, you know, Haitian people, they kept you in private school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. so I they still that. had to work hard <laughs> still had that, um, yeah. to keep us there. But my, the the money that my dad was making working in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. um, he couldn't find it in Philly because he's an immigrant, barely speak English. So mm -hmm. he was in Philly at the time. Maybe he was in New York at the time. Twenty years, twenty years in. So he wasn't leaving that job. So he commuted 
um, every weekend he commuted. Wow. Yeah. Every Friday mm. he would come home. Um, and every Sunday night he would leave. So and he, he gave, stayed with family. He stayed really. with family. He lived with his brother in Brooklyn. Jeez. Yeah, it was crazy. He did wow. that for he did that for twenty seven years until he had a stroke. God bless. You. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, twenty seven years until he had a stroke. Um and he gave us the same story. He was like, um, I'm, I'm going to work. I'm not going to be with any other women. I'm not out here in these streets. I'm going to work. I'll be back. Just tell us that or all every time wow. he left. I know wow. it broke his heart. Wow. Yeah. Um my mom, um, she um part of the American story where she had a factory job. She used to remember Beverly Hills Polo Club? Yes. This, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. she used to work for them and designed their sweaters. Wow. Yes, I remember going to work with her and watching her design the sweaters. Wow. Um they moved the factory overseas, mm -hmm. part of that whole Reaganomics, mm -hmm. where a lot of companies mm -hmm. were shipped overseas and she lost her job. Mm -hmm. She had to get a high school diploma. I remember helping my mom take the test to get her yeah. GED. Yeah. Um, mm. and then she became a CNA. So working the three to 11s, the 11 to seven shifts, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then trying to put, trying to put kids through private school. So mm -hmm. that was the hard part of the journey that that middle-class journey was really difficult, but my, I'm, you know, you know, you know, our Haitian people, man, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's what they do. Yeah. And then, um, Resilient. went to Bishop McDevitt high school, Temple university, mm. Lincoln university. And would you study at Temple? Here I am. So in, um, at Temple, I study public relations at Temple. Mm. Ironically, I broke my parents' heart because you know I was pre med. <laughs> yeah, I was oh, pre med freshman year. Okay, okay. Yeah, pre med <laughs> freshman year. Uh -huh. Took my first chem class. Uh -huh. They spoke Chinese throughout the whole thing, <laughs> right? Okay. And I was like, yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> I got my first C in the history of my life. Wow. And I was like, no, because it only gets harder from here. Right, right. Yeah. Right, I was right. like, yeah, I went home. I was like, yeah, this ain't it. After sophomore, after um, freshman first semester, my dad was devastated. He was like, no, you got so duck that pool. Yeah, you got to yeah, be a yeah, doctor. Right, right, exactly. And I was like, no, like, uh, I, I learned early about what um, owning your happiness is. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not, I won't be happy doing this. Mm -hmm. So he's like, what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I got into college when I was 17, right? Not okay. 18. So I was like, I don't know. I'm 17. Right, <laughs> I, don't, right. I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life. Right, like, give, right. give me a minute or whatever, <laughs> right? Um, but I ended up um, sticking to public relations because I like, I love business. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love the advertising of business. Mm -hmm. um, that's why social media right now really fascinates me. Mm -hmm. um, but um, got into that. Then um, after college... Um, I probably like worked, got odd jobs here and there. I used to do, um, take care of um, um, intellectually um, disabled individuals. Mm -hmm. I did that for a little bit. And then my boss at the time, he's like, you're you're better than this. You can do more. Why don't you teach them? Right? So I, so I was like, all right. She's like, we got a school on the campus. You could teach them. And then I started teaching them. I enjoyed it. Then um, I went and got my master's mm -hmm. in human services because I liked it. I was like, y'all can run something like this. So I went and got my master's degree. And then um, after I got my master's degree, I um, I, I ran a nonprofit. Um, and I was an executive director, $3 million budget, right? Good gig, right? Mm -hmm. But I was making like 55000 a year. And I had a master's degree. Right. Wow. And I was an ED. I was at the top. Wow. wow. And I was like... So this is mm -hmm. it. This is it. Yeah, I yeah. should became a doctor. You, yeah, you, you hit that wall. <laughs> I hit the wall. I yeah. hit the I hit the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I was like, this this can't be it. Mm -hmm. Um, then another friend of mine he got into IT, and he's like, yo man, they make six figures over here, and you don't even need to have a college degree. So he gave me the game, and I got into IT. Um, first gig was eighty. Second gig was one was one one hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm giving you these numbers because. There's a story behind it because, mm -hmm. you know, in our world, you know, the dream when our parents are, you know, um, coming to this country, like, yo, our kids make six figures, you good mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was good. But then you have kids and, and right. they, my parents didn't know about inflation life, life happens. <laughs> and life happens That's key right there. Um, inflation. Um, right there. So um, my um, fast forward just a little bit to, to, to get you to Bella Sloan. Right. Yeah, sure. So um, my wife is pregnant with our first daughter, Bella Sloan. Shout out to Bella. And we took a baby moon to Italy, right? Nobody knows a baby moon. Whenever I tell the story, that's like, what's baby, that? Yeah, I, it's like it's like the it's the trip you take when you find out you're pregnant. It's the last free single trip you're gonna have. Uh, got it. Right. Got it. Okay. So before the baby comes, so your life is over after yeah. that, right? <laughs> so uh, we go to Italy for like ten days. Uh, my wife Janelle, shout out to Janelle. She's a planner, so she planned out Italy. I'm talking about. We went to Venice. We went to um, Amalfi Coast. Mm. We went to Rome. We went to all these places in 10 days, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, one day we were going to Pisa to go see the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Mm -hmm. 
and then um she's sleeping. Big baby bump, train is going by, we passing by the vineyards, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then I had a moment, right? The aha moment Oprah talks about where I was like, dang, I wish I can do this whenever I want. Because yeah. people do that. Right. They go to yeah. Italy because they feel like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And then um, but I had to ask somebody permission to get here. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when I get back, I don't have any more vacation days because you only get two weeks. Yeah. I know. And I got a baby yeah. coming. Wow. wow. Right. right. So I can't even take time off to to help out. So I, I happened to be telling the story to my brother, Kevin, mm -hmm. and he was like, bro, in order to be free, you have to own your own. Right. And that always resonated with me. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't even have that mindset because entrepreneurship or ownership or being an investor um, is a mindset. Side note to all the people that are listening. Um, everybody doesn't have to be an entrepreneur. Everyone has to be an investor. You have to. OK. Hmm. Um, so I was like, well, the only thing I do is credit because I've been doing credit a long, 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 long time. I remember my dad's credit got on my credit. Right, because we have the same name. Right. right. So I, I learned early. You just got to call them, like, yo. And it was easier then to get stuff right. off your credit. I was like, yo, this isn't mine. Like, my birthday is eighty one. You see, my birth, my dad's birthday is fifty four. Like, you can tell, oh, this this isn't yours. I'm like, yeah, you got to take that off. And this is right after college. This is early. Wow. Right. This is mm -hmm. twenty years ago. <clears throat> okay. So um, I was like, well, I've been doing it for free. I look out for my friends. I give them a little game. He's like, bro, they gonna pay somebody. They might as well pay you. Wow. And that's, that's how you how, stumbled into and it. And that's how and that's how Bella Sloan Enterprises came. He was like, they're gonna pay. So I was doing credit a while, but there was no name to it. There's no business, there's no LLC, there's no structure. He's like, they're gonna give somebody some this money, Brett, bro. They might as well do you. So what I did was I um called up a couple of my friends. Um I remember one of my first first clients, Daff. Shout out to Daff. I was like, listen, let me um let me fix your credit for free, mm -hmm. right? Got like 10 people, fix their credit for free. Listen to entrepreneurs, listen to this, all right? Do it for free. All right, give the game for free. They're going to come. So when I gave it for free and your sauce works and your execution delivers, mm -hmm. then I posted the results. Mm -hmm. So when I started posting the results, we thought, oh, he really does this. I'm like, yeah, I really do. I just say I did it. I really do it. <laughs> right, That's when right. I knew early that success has receipts. I could say I do it, right? But I got to show, show that I do it Absolutely. consistently. Right. So I got 10 people who results are coming in every 30 days. So people say, like, oh, he really do it. Because some people just watch for a while. Yeah. Right. And they'd be like, all right, he seems legit. Mm -hmm. And then they come. So then after that, I started charging and it was 300 and it was 500 and it was 600 and people kept paying. I was like, all right, let me raise it to 750. Kept paying, kept paying. And it was a thousand. That was 1500 and people still paying. And you're still have you still have your nine to five at this time. At I this still time. still have your nine to five. Like um, like Storm says, your nine to five is your first business partner. Correct. Right. So my nine to five was funding a lot of things because when it was when I was doing it for free, right? My nine to five had to support it. When I was doing it for 300, that was just pocket money, right? right? Mm -hmm. My nine to five was still supporting it. Then when I raised it to 500 and I started understanding debt more, right? Because I was, I was still doing only credit. I wasn't doing business credit, right? So a lot of things were being done on my personal side. So I would use my business revenue to pay down my debt, mm -hmm. right? So then when I got out of total credit card debt, you know, the lines, the, the, the stars in line. And that's when I learned about business credit. And I was like, oh, I could just put this on my business name. Oh, okay, cool. So that's a separation there. You know, when you learn something, you think, all right, that's dope. But I didn't know everybody didn't know about it. Right. So then I found out that people didn't know about it. And I was like, well, I got to tell my people about this. Okay. And that's what really took off Bella Sloan because people hurt, people hear about credit all the time. They understand why it's important. But business credit is next level stuff. Yeah. Somebody give me twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 just because you have an LLC? Yeah. 20, 30 bands. Like, yo, you know what I could do with 20, 30? I was like, I don't know, but I can show you how to get it. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right? And then it's right. been history. Then they'd be like, yo, my man got me 30. And then it's just been, okay. it's been ball game ever since. And that's pretty much the, the long and short of this journey while we're here. Wow. And then, wow. and then, you know, these guys hit me up because they think I know something. <laughs> Stock Pass <laughs> Podcast. And here we are back in Brooklyn nah, where bro. it all started. No, <laughs> bro. You know, nah. you know a lot, man. We came here to an event right. that uh, you were doing with Jew, bro. Yeah. Pack, I mean, pandemic. It was, it was, it was pack it was the house, bro. Yeah, that it was, was wild. It was it was wow, dope. bro. It was dope. It because was dope. they want the information. They yeah, the they want information. information. And people you, are hungry, bro. Yeah, yeah. And, and you came through very professional. You gave the game. You gave the, the, the presentation, right? Mm -hmm. You texted to them. Right. But before you before you left, you said, it's all about you now. You got to execute. Right, right, right. right. You could give right. all the game you want, but you got to make sure you execute. And right, we're going right. to talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's interesting that you say, listening to your journey, I'm just like, in a Haitian household, 
and you, you started pre med, mm -hmm. and now you're you're you got a hundred k coming in, yeah. you know, doing IT, and then now you you fall into the um, the business side, yeah, and that's when it opens up. So right. now at this time, like, are you are your parents looking at you like, what what are you what are you doing? What are you like, doing? So. So let's let's start before I tell you what my parents said when I decided to shift. Right, um, when I was, God, I think when I told my dad I didn't want to do uh, medicine anymore, he's like, "Well, well, what do you want to do?" I was like, "You know what? Everybody's doing real estate." I was like, "I probably do real estate." And my dad's like, "You want to do real estate? You got a rich dad?" And I was like, <laughs> "No." Here's why my dad said this. Right, a fun fact: mm -hmm. my dad used to work for Fred Trump, Donald Trump's father. Wow. wow. Right. So my dad. Um, at the time, he told me, he's like, you know, I'm a property manager for him, right? So I help maintain his properties. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. But he's like, you know, I know Fred Trump. Like, he's rich. That's why Donald is rich. He's like, you don't have a rich dad. How are you going to get into it? Um, I came up with the theme, audit your circle, when I did a TED Talks. Shameless plug. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, right. Mm -hmm. When I did a TED Talks because uh, my father was one of my greatest advisors, Right. But my father can only take me so far because my my father can only my own, my father only knows so much, mm -hmm. and he can only give me so much in regards to his experiences. My father um, was not a rich is not a rich is not a rich man. He um he he's not a millionaire. Um, he has one real estate property, which is what we per what he purchased in Philly. He's okay. not an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do, my dad couldn't take me there. Right. right? So it was a it was a difficult. Thing for me to process where he's like no you need to get a job you need to become a doctor or an engineer or an right. astronaut you need to get a job because that's what he knows the blueprint to success is because right. where he comes from in haiti you know what i'm saying you have a job that's a big deal like you're you're respectable you got a degree and you know they could brag about it right. yeah right yeah. so that's my dad perspective my mom when i told her i was going to quit my six-figure job right she couldn't process that mm. like she did she couldn't even understand it she literally thought her son was going crazy <laughs> and i was like no mom like i'm teaching now now mom and people are are buying my time mm. hear what i said mm. people are buying my time for the information that i'm giving i'm not giving people you know i'm not working for money anymore mm. right i'm That's not giving i'm not giving somebody 40 hours for a set amount people are giving me 10 15 20 times what i make at work for one saturday a month Cause she always asked me, "Hey, how how class went?" I was like, "Oh, class was amazing. A hundred people showed up. Two hundred people showed up. She's like, wow, that's crazy." But she never knew how much I made. Okay. So when I had successful classes for five, six, seven months in a row, that was the time to have a conversation with God and be like, "All right, what's next?" And how right. much how much were you making with those classes monthly? Five figures. It was ten, fifteen thousand dollars every Saturday. People wow. were coming nationwide, wow. right, to come and hear me speak, which is crazy. Wow. To me, it's crazy. Like, who came the farthest? You know how you break the ice? Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Wyoming. I'm yeah. from L.A. I'm wow. from Washington. I'm from, and I'm teaching in Philly, 77% of the class is from out of town. Really? Right? Yeah. It was never Philly. It was, it was always never, always never Philly. It was always out of town people that's dominating the class. Right? That's interesting. That's, the, that's, the, that's interesting because of social media. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I just didn't think somebody in L.A. was listening to me. Mm. Right? So Vegas. So they would come out and they would they would listen to me speak. So when I when I... When I had to make a decision, I had to fast, right? So I was like, "This is gonna be a life decision. It can't be emotional. It's a financial decision." It's like, "All right, you know what? I'm gonna fast this week. God can give me some direction." So several things happened that week, right? Because I think I take prayer seriously. Mm -hmm. um, Got to put a pin in it, right? Before I get to the fast, the week before that, right? Mm -hmm. I went to Costa Rica with my guys, my um, my team. We call it, we call each other the Rock Boys, right? So we go to Costa Rica, live like kings. Mm got this bro we got this like 15 bedroom compound sitting on top of a mountain wow it was ridiculous and we lived like kings for five days mm. right every time i go on vacation something happens <laughs> so um italy now this right this one life changes <laughs> mm -hmm. so when i come back i'm back in my cubicle at my six-figure job though right mm -hmm. and my I'm, I'm having this pounding headache mm. because i was put back in a cage uh. right the beast was unleashed i I can't, once I see it, I can't unsee it. Right. Mm. That's how the brain works. That's how you, what do you say usually when your well, mind expands? When, once your mind expands, it can't, un, it, it can't, can't go can't, back. It can't, it can't revert go back. back. It can't revert back, state. bro. Like, like I, I never go back to the original state. I couldn't go back. Right. right. So now my brain was like, well, how do we do that whenever we want? 
right? So I was like, yo, you making this bread? I'm taking phone calls in the broom closet. Hey, Bella Swan Enterprises, how can I help you? Right? This is what's happening. Yeah. So the people are asking for it. The market is requesting it. So um, I'm fasting. Then my man, he doesn't know I'm fasting. Shout out to my man, Fitz. He sends me a video from Gary V. Gary V says, he was like, um, if you want to quit the job, quit the job. You're going to be this age for five minutes, right? You can always get what? Get another job. So just jump. You're scared. So, so then I was like, I was like, all right, I'm getting close. I think, I think I might do this. Right. So I'm, I'm typing up my, um, my mock resignation letter. Still haven't made a decision yet, but you know, I'm putting it out in the energy. I'm putting it, I'm putting it out there. I was mm-hmm. like, such and such. Da, da, da. And then um, my wife calls me. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, she, my wife doesn't know I'm fasting. She's like, listen, um, I just want to tell you something. Fear and faith cannot exist in the same place. They can't. Mm. Only one thing can be here. And I was like, that's what I needed. So mm. next day, put my two weeks in. Powerful. Right? Mm-hmm. But what's more powerful than that is that God gave me permission. He said, he said, um, you can quit your job. I got you. Right? He was telling me validation. Mm-hmm. So why am I giving them two weeks? Mm. You gonna work again? No. no. What you need to give them two weeks for? Mm. I said, quit. Wow. So four days later, I thought, yeah, I'm not coming back. <laughs> Here's your wow. laptop. <laughs> I'm out of here. Out. Wow. There was no two weeks. You get two weeks out of out of yeah. respect and nice so you don't screw yourself in the right. next job. Right, right, right. Nah, yeah. God said leave. And I was disobedient. He said, get out of here. Mm. And then I left. So yeah. you left with <laughs> I'm just going, I'm I'm just thinking. Right, right. Uh, yeah. It's dope. It's 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 like giving me chills. Yeah. <laughs> chills, chills, chills. I left. Chills. So you left with a savings. A I left. Oh yeah. So so listen. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I'm a man of faith, and everybody might not be a man of faith, but right. I'm still smart. All right. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, um, no doubt. All key. the money that I was making, right? Because my job was my original business partner. Right. That was paying the bills. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm a frugal person. You see, I'm all black, everything, all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, um, that money that I was making, that five figures I was making every month, that was in an account. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So. You know, God requires faith sometimes, but he put a parachute on my back. True. There was 50 sitting in the in the, in the savings account. That's good. All right. So Gosh. if the world came to an end, if I didn't make another dollar, I did the math. That 50K would pay every single bill I had for two years. If I didn't make another dollar, the mortgage would be paid. The cable, the Internet, every luxury that I have, the Internet, all of it will be paid. Got my it. wife, all she would have to do is buy food. So we were good. OK. So God gave me permission and a two year cushion. And I was so it was it was it was an easier decision for me to make than right. some people who right, got right. oh God told you to quit. Right. right, 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 right and you right. don't have a pot to piss in. Like yeah, yeah. I ain't telling y'all to do that. Right, right. <laughs> but I had some, I had some money saved up because okay, I was cool. I was responsible. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Because gotcha. I know people want to take that leap at times. And I mm-hmm. listen to a lot of people's stories. Right. And they would say, I want to do it, but this is my only income in the household. Right. And you know, it's I have kids, I have this, I but I have this business mindset. I mindset. have this this vision, right? You know, but I want to take the leap of faith, but mm-hmm. I can't because of right responsibilities. Responsibilities, yeah. 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 yeah, life happens. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's, <laughs> but you gotta oh, do it responsibly. You gotta right, do it responsibly. Right. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta you plan it out. You gotta you plan know, it out. And, it's gotta be structure. Spouse. Yeah, talk it's, to your spouse, and I, and it, exactly the household has to be like confirmed first. It has right. to be secure. Right. Right. Say. Right. Yeah, you know, your partner has to be on the same page. Absolutely. I'm a believer that my dreams cannot interfere with the day to day of, you know, what I mean, my right. my wife and my children, because that's my first ministry. That's my first job Absolutely. is to make sure my wife and, and, and children are good. Um, but just to, you know, just to uh, uh, not to get too preachy, freak God, just a little that's bit. Fine. So cool. after I quit the job. Mm-hmm. Right. Because God said quit. Right. Mm-hmm. After I quit the job, my wife was like, yeah, so like I'm pregnant. Wow. I was like, you pregnant? I already gave the two weeks. <laughs> because the because the the mindset of the nine to five person is I their security in the job. Right. Right. So now I have no security. And you're telling me a second child is coming. Mm, wow. So I, I go back to God. I'm like, word? <laughs> this is what you're doing to me? He's like, word. He's like, I'll show you. 
I'll show you what I can do. I told you to quit. Okay. I knew I knew she was pregnant before you did. Right. I got and this. I told her I got this. I, and I still told you to quit. Mm-hmm. Wow. So it's it's just, it's been a blessing. And th- those two kids are the batteries in my back. They are my wise. So I'm, I'm I'm enjoying life now, but um, I'm planting seeds for fruit I will never see. Right? Mm-hmm. They will they will enjoy the fruits of all of this. I'm living a good life right now. Um, I must say, but they're gonna live an incredible life. Wow. So let let's get into it. So. Mm-hmm. Bella Sloan is popping off, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, you inspire a lot of people mm-hmm. who have businesses, right? Um, there's good ideas out there, right? You got yeah. a business, everybody want to kickstart. A lot of people are using their own money mm-hmm. to fund their business, but there comes a point where it starts it, it, it starts to become draining, right? Right, and people don't know about business credit, or they know about it and don't they don't know the steps to get there, and so you are the man. Yeah. To uh to kind of show the ropes of how to make that happen. Right. What are some and we took your master class, by the way, with okay. Storm and, and Ash Cash, right? right? Mm-hmm. And the one thing you talk about, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, the funding blueprint. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Share with us a few aspects of what you need from the funding blueprint to get down the right path of getting business credit. So um the first thing I want to say is structure, right? You gotta put yourself in position to get fundable so i like to give the examples that listen we're in the matrix right literally right now because we're going into the metaverse and all that stuff right Mm -hmm. so in order for you to work in this realm in this place in this banking system in this structure in this matrix per se Mm -hmm. you have to look and walk accordingly right so if you call yourself a business and you are walking into another business to do business with them you gotta come correct because they are correct Mm -hmm. the bank the banking systems, they have that company, they have their structures in place, right? So when a cons- when a customer, an individual walks in there, they're going to treat that person accordingly. But when a business walks in there, notice I didn't say a business owner. When a business walks in there, you got to look like them. You got to look like a business. So for me to do business with you, we're doing B2B right now. So when I go into a bank and I form a new relationship with a lender, Um, Herman Dulce is just the mouthpiece of Bella Sloan because Bella Sloan Enterprises, the company, cannot speak. Just like Wells Fargo and Chase and Bank of America, they cannot speak. They send out their their mouthpiece, right? Mm -hmm. So when I walk into a a, a business, it's the the two mouthpieces speaking together, Mm -hmm. right? So they have they they have their what they have their structure, they have their bylaws, they have their SOPs, their standing operating procedures. So I need to have those things too to do business with them. So number one, you definitely need to have your LLC, as we talk at minimum, right? S corp, C corps, we can go down a rabbit hole that has more tax implications. Um, talk to your tax professional. So, um, but at minimum, you need to have your LLC that needs to be structured appropriately. Um, I'm going to stress this again and again and again to anybody within the sound of my voice. Separate yourself from your business. All right. You don't know who the owner of Chase is. You don't know who the owner of Wells Fargo is. Right. You can do that as simple as setting up an LLC. Sell, setting up the LLC correctly. Right. So um, number one, <clears throat> get yourself your LLC. Number two, remember, the business has got to look alike. Right. The bank looks like something. You walked into their brick and mortar mm-hmm. building. So you want to make sure that your business has an address. Right. A real professional business address. You got to look super professional to them. If you can't do that just yet, um, then get yourself a virtual address. You could just Google virtual addresses. There's a bunch of them in your neighborhood where when you put that on an application and the bank Googles you, they'll see a real business address. I want to stress something out about why this is important. You really shouldn't skip it. If you go to the Secretary of State website, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I won't ask you what your business is. I don't know if you switched it up yet. So, <laughs> so if you look up your business, you go to the Secretary of State website and you put in your business name, guess what pops up? Your business address. Mm-hmm. If your business address is your home address, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, that's dangerous. That's dangerous, yeah. We right? have an LLC and a business address. Yeah. And a business address. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. Brick and mortar. Brick and mortar. We, and mortar. We, did it, we, we did have our home, home address addresses. Yeah. Because we were just... Going, right, because right. we get the game and we thought, ooh, LLC. So we put our name, right, phone number, right. we put all our personal information right. on there when the, when, the, when the purpose of it is for it to be separated, Correct. right? So yeah. um, so get yourself a business address, get yourself a real business phone number, not your cell phone number, get a 1-800 number. Um, you can Google virtual phone numbers because the bank that you're doing business with has that, right? 
And then you put that information on the LLC, your business address, your business phone number. You have to have a professional website because the bank has a web professional website. Right. They have a business email address. Get yourself a business email address. Our email address is info at bellasloanenterprises.com, not bellasloan at gmail.com. I'm a pro. I'm a professional. So when I walk into the bank with my docs and I look like they do, now they're like, okay, we can do business with you. We can do real business because you can't correct Right. So you put a couple of dollars in the bank. Right. Bank. Account. I like I call it the 50 50 play. Um, shout out to my guy, Newt. Um, he taught me that play. And um, you put $50 in a check in, $50 in a saving. Now you have a relationship with the bank. Right. So I taking a girl out. Mm -hmm. You got to come on, bro. You got to pay for dinner. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So right, I paid right. for dinner. Mm -hmm. Now I can ask for something. Right. Um, can I get business credit? Um, and what's, what's beautiful about business credit is that it's in the business's name. It's not in my personal name, right? Now, when you first start up because your business is new, just like if you had a kid 16, 17, 18 years old and you, they're going to get a car, they don't have credit yet. Mm -hmm. So you got to do what? You got to co-sign for your kid. Right, right. So basically you're co-signing for your business because your business isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. But after a couple of years and revenue is generated for your business, you don't, you're, you don't have to co-sign for your business. Um, anymore, but it all starts with these foundational steps mm -hmm. that you have to put into place Got right? you. to put you in position. Wow. And, and bro, that was just one bank, <laughs> that, right? Right. So right, that right, was just right. one bank. Go so ahead, go ahead, yeah. say for instance, that one bank, you, you know, your, your, your personal credit is in, is in good shape. You got your 680 and above You're a 700. You already got a couple of credit cards. Cause side note, it's not just having good credit. Oh, I got 700 credit. I'm always getting denied. Well, it's not just that. The banks like to see a, a credit profile. Your credit report is your adult report card, right? So you just, you took one class in college, is it? You got one credit card, you got one secure credit card, and you on two of your mama's credit cards? No, that's not good credit, right? Mm -hmm. right? You got a good credit score, but you need more than that. Right. So you need to have a couple of personal credit cards that have aged out, two years or older. Banks love to see that. Maybe a car note, you got some student loans, but at least you need to have credit cards before you ask the bank for credit cards in your business name. So you go to the bank on a low side. If they give you 10000 that's great. 0% interest for 12 months. So all my entrepreneurs, I know y'all know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. If I give you 10000 do you know what the payment is on $10,000, 0% interest? Under $100. Under $100. Under $100 a month. And I gave you 10000 And you have 12 months to flip it. Wow. Oh, I got it. But I just sent you to one bank. What if you went to two or three or four in your area? What I love to teach in my master class is, listen, I want you to to Google credit unions and your zip code, you'll be amazed how much credit unions pop up within a three, four, five mile, uh, mile radius of your home. Mm -hmm. Go start a relationship with all of them, right? Okay. And that's how you get, at the beginning of the podcast, you said, well, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 and more. So when they heard that, it was like, all right, you over-exaggerating. No, bro, if one bank is gonna give me 10 in my business name, well, there's five, six banks in the zip code I'm going to run the same play over and over again. So do you say, do you feel that the credit unions are more of a one-to-one -one relationship and yeah. not just so, so much like the bigger... The bigger banks. The yeah, bigger yeah. Banks. Yeah. The, like the credit unions in my area. Uh -huh. I love them because I literally know the vice president there, right? I formed a relationship. I'm always there. They're like, hey, Aaron, what's going on? I have a relationship. Right. You're going to get to a place where in your funding journey where they're going to give you the bread just because. This is a true story. You know, I have success as receipts. I post this at another time. I went to the bank. Um, I transferred 40000 from my line of credit into my checking account, and I wired the 40000 out because I have a play I'm doing, right? So the 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 lender, one of the bank reps, she was like, um, you have a lot of accounts here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I do. Because uh, at that bank, I probably have like seven LLCs doing business with them. Mm -hmm. And they see the money coming in and out. They see the credit that they give me. So it's like, okay, well, this, this, this 40 you just moved, right? There's a fifty thousand dollar line. Would you like to make it a hundred? Wow. And I just came in there just a wire, right? And I was like, uh, I didn't feel like I didn't feel like the paperwork, I didn't feel like doing anything. Okay. Uh, and it was like, no, 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 like I'll just I'll make it real simple. You have a lot of accounts here. I think we can do that for you. And you have two lines of credit here. We could we could make both of them a hundred thousand. And wow. then she sent me, she at, at that moment she sent me a calendar invite. Today's Sunday. Tomorrow, I have a meeting with her, so we can so we can do the paperwork to get into a hundred thousand. Because I built relationships with the banks, nice. so it's not just a good credit score, guys. Your credit profile got to be nice, and you have to build a relationship with the banks. So over time, they're just gonna give you the money just because. Wow. 
I just want to go back I just want to <laughs> because that's, that's you know, as somebody who's running a business, have a, a good idea, mm -hmm. right? You you go to one bank to get credit, right? You think that's all you need, but you're saying that you can go to different banks, yeah. credit unions, and run the same play, right? And get either the same amount or more, right? Bro, you're a faithful man, right? <laughs> of course, not me. I'm cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating. Talk about that. Talk I'm about cheating. That. Bank of America is my side, John. My main, John. John is person, place, or thing. I'm from Philly, right? right? right. Bank of America is my side, John. My other, John, is citizens, right? But my, my real nice side piece, right, is Key Bank, right? My baby mom, <laughs> her name is um, Philadelphia Federal Credit <laughs> Union. You know what I'm saying? No, I cheat, right? Form relationships right. with different lenders. That's how you expand your portfolio, bro. Mm -hmm. And listen, I have more than one LLC, right? So, so can you I, have? Can can one person have? I'm sorry. Unlimited. You. Unlimited. How many? There's yeah. no cap. There's no cap to what I can do, what I can become. So you can have what as many LLCs as you want, right? So, um, you can. So, so she's like, you have a lot of business accounts with us. Each account is an LLC. So when she pulled up for me to do the wire, she she pulled up the one EIN, it pulls up my entire profile. So she saw, oh, wow. So at that one particular bank, I had like seven checking accounts, seven savings accounts, because a checking account is just one product. That's why I tell my my team, you know, you got to get open up a checking account and open up a savings account because that's two products you have with them. Mm -hmm. And you put $50 in checking, $50 in saving, then you ask them for money. Now you have a credit card with them. That's three products you have with them. If your business is over two years old, now you can access for a line of credit. Now you have four products with them. I have seven LLCs with them. Wow. So I just, I'm just, I'm in, I'm in with them. Right, yeah. So that's why. But they think, right. but because I'm giving her my time, mm -hmm. I'm giving her my money. <laughs> I'm telling how much I love her. Right, right, she right. thinks she the main one. No. I take those same seven LLCs and I go to Bank of America and make her feel special too. Wow. So Bank of America, give it up. Game. Okay. Game. Game. Right? I do not support misogynistic behavior, gentlemen. <laughs> this is just. Yeah, that's your camera right uh, there. Right. Tell this tell is, tell this is right just <laughs> um, a scenario, all right? As an example, all right? That's big. All right, good, good. That's big. Um, that's big. The difference between personal credit and business mm -hmm. credit, right? Yeah. So if Rob and I are going into the bank right now to get business credit, are they going to look at our personal credit? Right now, yes, they will. Okay. Um, but we can talk about ways so that, that that doesn't happen. But yeah, so if your LLC is new, it's never done business before, or they don't know who you are, yeah, they're gonna need you to, you know, I mean, to co-sign for it. So they're gonna it's called something called a personal guarantee. Mm -hmm. So if if your business doesn't pay the debt, you will be personally guaranteed for it, right? You'll be personally responsible. But that debt, that twenty five thousand, that thirty thousand, that forty thousand, if they gave you a hundred thousand, nowhere on my credit report. Well, you see it. It's not on your credit report. It's not there. The only time it shows up there is if you default on it. Somebody got to go after it, but they said you'll, 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 you said you pay for it when you sign the paper. So you can do that. That's why it's so important to build up your business credit profile to you, to the point where you never have to personally guarantee anything. Right. So, no, my, my business name is my business name. My business has a credit score of 80 and above because in the business credit world, it's called a paydex score. It goes from zero to 100. It's a lot simpler than in business. Personal. Mm -hmm. So now I've built my business credit up. I put um, certain vendors on my credit business credit profile. So like Uline, U-L-I-N-E, right? You can go to them, order $50 worth of whatever on their website, ask them for business credit. They're going to start you off with a line of credit of $1,000, nothing crazy, and it actually reports to your business credit profile, right? Um, a lot of people don't know this, but 95% of business credit doesn't report to your business credit profile. So how are you reporting this? How are you... How am I building my credit up if I can? Like in the personal world, I, I get a stick of gum and it's on my credit report. Yeah. Business side, it doesn't work that way. So you want to go to these lenders, these vendors that help you do that. Uline is one of them. Another one is Divvy, D-I-V-V-Y. This is a major one. Um, I always tell my clients about because they don't care what your credit look like. As long as your business um, business checking account is over three months old mm -hmm. and they they make a decision on how much money is sitting in there, they'll give you a $10,000, $15,000 credit card just like that. Right. Because the business credit world is changing. That's actually cash credit card. So there's a way to do it. But your business has to be what structured properly structured in the beginning. Properly. You come correct to them. They're going to come correct to you. Talk about the um, Dun and Bradstreet. Mm -hmm. That that helps you um, build your credit profile. That helps you build your credit profile. So Dun and Bradstreet is, is one of the oldest 
credit reporting agencies on the planet, even older than personal credit, mm -hmm. right? Because that's how nations were built. Right. Um, conglomerates were built. They were built on business credit. The bank, if these these uh, people went to the banks and asked them for business, shipping companies, right? And so Dun & Brash, she kept a record of these transactions um, that businesses were doing. So getting your Dun's number, D-U-N-S, um, you go to that company since they hold your credit report for your business, you need to have a number with them outside of your EIN, right? Because they're going to report everything to that number, not to your EIN, right? So you want to have that because that's what the banks are looking at when you're trying to get funding. They're like, well, let's see what your Dun score is. Is it 80 and above? Have you ever done business with any other lender before? Because you want to, you don't want to PG it. Okay, cool. Well, let's see what it looks like. So you can have an 80 business credit score and you can walk into Mercedes Benz and get a car, no personal guarantee. Wow. Because you had just have an 80 business credit score. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. We haven't, we, we didn't learn about that. No, so, bro, no. you could be half a million dollars in debt on a business side, mm -hmm. have two or three Mercedes Benz. Right. Have a BMW. That's another one that does no personal guarantee. Ally Bank, A-L-L-Y. That's another one that does no personal guarantee on the business side for, for, for your car. Right. And you could be half a million in debt and it's time for you to buy a house. Right. Thank God half a million in debt is not on your personal side. It's on the business side. Mm. So now you can get that house. Now you can get a car for your kid and your per in the personal. You can right. co-sign for the kid all because you've leveraged that debt on the business side. Um, and let's talk about debt for a second because sure, we're talking about absolutely. business debt, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good debt, bad debt. Right, right. it's good debt and bad debt. Mm -hmm. Credit was invented to make money. Mm -hmm. That's what it was invented for. If I hold this 100, I'll give you 110 in three weeks. Mm -hmm. The banks were like, cool. I make $10 off of money that they just made up. The money right. never, the money was never there. I just gave you credit. Right, it was fake money anyway, but you're gonna give me back uh, my a hundred and ten dollars of real money. It's smoke and mirrors, mm -hmm. right? So you gotta leverage credit to make money. So you guys are like, "Damn, Herman got fifty thousand? No, I have fifty thousand dollar line of credit, right? Um, I took forty out because I know I'm gonna get sixty back. Give the bank back their forty, and now I'm gonna have twenty thousand dollars cash sitting in my checking account. You become the bank. I become the bank." Mm -hmm. Right, like, damn, you made twenty thousand dollars in in um in um. I think I'm gonna get that twenty in like six weeks, right? I saw this amazing interview with this guy named Mark Marquez. Right, mm -hmm. he said, um, because when I was um doing five figures in classes mm -hmm. a month, um, he said this crazy interview, but only somebody who's done that can understand it. He was like, it is easier to make thirty thousand in a month than it is to make thirty thousand in a year. Yes, it is easier to make thirty thousand in a week. Than it is to make in a month, and it's easier to make thirty thousand in a day than it is to make in a week. That sounds crazy, but it's true. Because yeah. when I took that bank's forty and flip it, and in six weeks somebody gonna give me sixty back, and I give back the bank forty, and I made twenty thousand dollars in six weeks. How long does it take for people to make twenty thousand in six weeks? Wow. Yeah, unless you're on the streets. Unless you're on the streets, right, and you got right. that weight, you right? Got that yeah. weight. Yeah. Herm, you got twenty thousand. What you gonna do with it? Because I ain't I'm definitely not gonna pay taxes on it. Right, because I'm because I'm Donald Trump Jr. Right, I'm not playing that game. <laughs> right, right. So I'm not. I'm a. I'm a. I'm gonna take that twenty and I'm gonna flip it. What again? Mm. And again, and you just keep doing it. I probably take a little bit out, mm -hmm. right? But we have to learn not to really live on the profits of our business right, so right. much. Everything you're doing is discipline with that. It's discipline, mm -hmm. right? right? So it took it took discipline to get the money. It took discipline to flip the money, and it takes discipline to keep the money and protect the money. Right. Because the money is for my kids' kids. Right. And the, everything you're doing is you're playing within the rules of... Of the matrix, of, 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 the, the, system. of, of the system. Of the system. Yes. Of the right. system. See, and, and that's the thing. It's like, when you don't know, you don't know. When you don't know, you don't right. know. And that's the that's the situation that we've been going through with our, you know, within our culture. Right, right. And a lot of us don't know. And they just look at it like, your, you know, like your dad, my, our parents, we, mm -hmm. they would say... No, you got to be rich to own real estate. Real estate, yeah, you know, right? You gotta, yeah. you gotta know. You have to, you know, the, you gotta know this other person to 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 get into this community, right? And it's it's not necessarily it's not necessarily true, but and I'm it, testament it, to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, sure. and exactly what you're saying, man. It and talk a little bit more about um, when you're 
like as far as like people that want to make money because i know a lot of business consultants too they say that i listen to a lot of people and they mm -hmm. say it's easier to make 100k in a week than it mm -hmm. is to make 100k in a year mm -hmm. because as a business consultant you're consulting a business and you're going to charge them 100k, 100K to, yard. to consult them mm -hmm. so now is this something that was that was um taught throughout your experience or mm -hmm. like it, was it something that you you learned from a book or how did all of this um so bro it's um mentorship okay right um can't stress that enough mm. shout out to temple university shout out to lincoln university they taught me how to get a job they taught me how to do that my mentors taught me how to make money mm. and not earn it they taught me how to make money so you know when you go to disney world and um or great adventure you pay that extra hundred to get to the front of the line, the fast pass. Right. Mentors. I paid mentors because my time, I realized my time is really valuable. I learned that when I made 10,000 in four hours. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I think differently. Oh, you want to do this? Nah. Why? Because I do the math. My time is valuable. I remember when I first moved out to the suburbs. Right. Mm -hmm. I saw the guy cutting the lawn next to me. Right. And I was like, oh, bro, how long it takes for you to cut this? He's like two hours. I was like, it takes you two hours to cut the front of the backyard. I knew then I will never mow my lawn because <laughs> I know what two hours means to me right. because I just did a class on a Saturday and I made ten thousand dollars in four hours. So I know my time is worth thousands an hour, an hour. So I definitely can't be cutting. I can't be cutting my class. So mentors, um, I paid them for their time because their time is valuable. And they showed me how to earn time and earn money and um, make money. And make money. Not earn, not the other way around. Not the other way. Because we yeah. grew up in a culture mm -hmm. where it's earn money. Earn money. And your time is not as valuable. It's not as valuable. You can give, you're going to give them your time. You're going to give them. And then in exchange, they'll give you your money. So mentors right. taught me the other, the other way around, right? Because so I'm going to tell the mentor, I'm going to be like, hey, like, um, you know, sit down. Can I take you out for a cup of coffee? Let me bend your ear. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask him for $10,000 worth of game in exchange for a bottle of water. Right. I know right. I, I'm watching him on Instagram. I'm watching him on social media. I know what his time is worth. Mm -hmm. Bro, here's 5000 Can I see you every Saturday for a month? All right, I'll talk to you every Saturday for a month mm. because the crumbs that he'll give me, I'll make the five thousand. Right, right. right. I make the five thousand back. So say for I just made the five thousand back at minimum. Mm -hmm. Right. He's mm -hmm. like, damn, Aaron, you just you lost it. You lost a month, and you got the five back. I was like, no. I was like, I'm at the front of the line now because I know what you don't know, and all I have to do is duplicate the five thousand dollars worth of game every single time. Exactly. Just keep doing it again. Right. So now I'm up 60,000. What are you talking about? No, I gave Temple University um, $40,000. My first job was $15 an hour. Who won? Temple or me? Because I got this piece of paper that's worth what? Lincoln University. I gave them another 20. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, I'm, um, I'm 60,000 in debt, but my executive director job is 55,000 before taxes. And I haven't eaten yet. Crazy. You know what I'm wow. saying? So so I had to, once we start to understand what time is, um, then we start to understand what, mo what money is. So to answer your question again, um, mentorship pushed me to the front of the line. I, I, I put myself around people who are a lot smarter than me. They taught me the game and they shot me to the front. Why don't we have a lot of mentors in the culture? Um, why don't we have a lot of mentors in the culture? So several reasons, in my opinion. Um, number one, mentors, right? And I want everybody who's trying to vet a mentor. Um, number one, anybody who is selling you a product to make money is not a mentor. They're making money by selling you the product. That's how they make their money. Mm -hmm. But if a mentor is teaching you the mm -hmm. game, mm -hmm. right? So that you can duplicate it over and over. So I'm telling people, so people pay me for my mentorship, right? And I tell people all the time, you're gonna make your money back in the first class, right? And my mentorship's a month long. If you execute properly. If you execute properly, right? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. <laughs> and I didn't get my money back. <laughs> Did you do what I told you to do? Right, right. <laughs> so if I showed you the first class, I give them the, I go into deeper detail about going into the banks to get funding, right? Mm -hmm. So if I showed you the first class how to get 10,000, did you get your money back? 
but I showed you, I showed you how to get 10,000. I showed you how to get 50, 60, 70, because you're going to do it running back in every bank. So your mentor has to show you how to get to where you want to be, not just sell you the product and they need money. So anybody just selling these courses and that's how they became millionaires and getting on jets? No, that's not your mentor. That's somebody that sold your product. You want somebody that's living, doing, breathing, and, and, and teaching how to do something. So, so that's number one. So um, there's not a lot of mentors because a lot of them are scammers. They're not mentors. But that's the, that's the issue right there because I know a lot of people that, I mean, we talk about, you know, growing up in a Haitian household where we, our mentors growing up in Brooklyn mm -hmm. were drug dealers, basketball right. players. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that we trusted. But when mm -hmm. somebody knocks on your door and says, hey, I'm here to teach you about business or mm -hmm. whatever, you're like, well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> so, so to answer your question, culturally, that's why there's not a lot of mentors, right? Because... Yeah, I mean, the guy on the court is not really exactly taking people under his wing to yeah. necessarily show yeah. them the game. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the last reason is that mentorship is takes a lot from the mentor, right? Mm -hmm. Because then the mentor is back at that space of giving up his time when he worked really hard to stop giving up his time. So even with my mentorship class, it is, it is, at a, it is structured. So every Tuesday and Thursday night, you guys got me from 7 to 10. That's the time... I'm allowing myself to give back to you. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason I'm able to do mentorship effectively is because I have a team now around me, right? Shout out to Damaris, who's going to be taking over Bella Sloan next year as a CEO. Mm -hmm. But right now, she's running the company. That's why I'm able to be to come here and do podcasts or travel here and here and speak here and there and speak mm -hmm. because I got a team that's building up the business, that's running the business. So I'm able to give back time. Right. Right, right. That I've that I've earned. Wow, dope stuff, man. Mm -hmm. um, share with us a couple of your testimonials. A couple of testimonials. So this this is my favorite one. Um, shout out to my girl Awa, A W A. She's from Harlem, right? Mm -hmm. And I was doing a free class like a month ago, and then she came up, and I'm like, like this real wrapping up, and then she's like, yo, this guy's legit. She's telling other people that are there. She's okay. 23 years old. Mm -hmm. She took my mentorship last year. And she was like, she's like, yeah, man, um, I, um, I, I got a truck and I started a trucking company. She's 23 years old. Wow. So they's like, wow, Herman doesn't know about that. So they they brought her over to me and it just it just blew my mind. She's 23 years old. I showed her how to get the money because in the mentorship, I don't know everything, right? I can get you the bread, but what are you going to do with it when you get it? I got to put you in a room with Jude, right? Shout out to the Brooklyn Bank who knows how to do real estate. Right. So, all right, so, you know, do a little profit share with Jude. So you pay the tuition. Cause I gave you the money, right. you're going to pay Jude his tuition, put 10,000 into this real estate thing that he's doing. And you're going to watch and learn and you're going to get a little profit. Cause it's not just me getting you the money. I got to show you what to do with it. Right. So on the platform, I have my man, shout out to my brother, Sherby, my business partner. Also, mm -hmm. he runs trucking company. So, all right, he'll give you the blueprint on if you want to invest in trucking and how you can make four to five figures a month. All right. Cause I gave you the credit to do it. So all she did was, bro, execute it. She took the note. She showed up to class every day and she executed. She went to the banks, got the bread, gave it to Sherby, followed the blueprint. And at 23 years old, you got a truck company. she got a, she got a trucking company. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely blew my mind. Or you have teachers, right, that are 50 or 60 who didn't get this game and they're sad and they're crying mm. because they're like, damn, I got this too late. I'm like, nah, bro, you didn't get it too late because I live by the motto. I'm planting seeds for fruit I would never see. So can you imagine being able to be able to rest in peace and have a good mindset because you're living your children something? Mm -hmm, definitely. So because so you're when your why is different, then you're you're at peace. So I have older people who have jobs and are able to quit their jobs um, because they executed on the information and they were relentless with it. Um, I tell people in my mentorship, I'm not here to make you quit your job. That's not what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. I'm here to give you options. I'm here to give you freedom. You walk a little different <laughs> when you got uh, your side hustle is making five, 10,000. Mm -hmm. Now, her showed me how to make five, 10,000 real quick per month. Mm. I'm not working overtime, I said. Mm. Nah, I'm, I'm coming in at 930. I'm not coming in at nine anymore. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a confidence, there's a freedom mm -hmm. that we have now when you're able to have control over your destiny, um, all because of these simple blueprints that they have had for generations but we too busy watching Netflix. We too busy watching Disney Plus that we have not had the opportunity to take this information. A lot of it is free 
and execute on it. Mm. You ever been to Haiti, Herman? So the answer to that is yes and no, right? <laughs> okay. So um, as a di diaspora, right? I hope I'm saying it right. Diaspora. Diaspora, yeah. diaspora yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot say you've been to Haiti if you've been to Labadee. Right. True. So for my honeymoon, I went to Labadi. <laughs> right. For those only only the countrymen will understand yeah, yeah. this joke. Labadi is like where honeymooners go and Royal Caribbean right, right. owns that part of Haiti. Yeah, right, right. right. Where there's zip lining and all that stuff. <laughs> Technically, you're on the uh, the beautiful island of Haiti, but right, right. you haven't been to Haiti. Right. So I haven't right. been to Haiti. Okay. That's like saying I like when people say, yeah, yeah, I've been to New York, Manhattan, right? Manhattan, Manhattan right? Nah, bro. You've been to Brooklyn, Queens, <laughs> Queens the Bronx. Bronx like, like, bro, you have man, been. technically, it's <laughs> not right. <laughs> <laughs> Only somebody from New York will understand right, that. Right, right, right. And you with the Hell's Kitchen? Good yeah, for you. Yeah, Good, yeah, for you. Good for you. That's great, man. That's, yeah, great. that's great. <laughs> wow. No, nah, that's cool, man. Because, like, there's something about that vision that you have that, like, you you preach and you bring that chill to people. Mm. And I think we need more of you. And you're just you're just the top of your game right now. So. I appreciate that. I don't know. I think I think I'm I'm listening to you, right? And mm -hmm. you know the the information is you know, unvaluable. But yo, I think your gift is a you're a teacher, bro. You're a teacher. I mean you. Exactly. I, I mean yes. I'm, that, that's just my opinion. But did but, you hear? But did you hear the journey though? So oh, that's right, what. Right, and then right. I didn't understand it until my brother Fitz told me because, like I told you, I was teaching intellectually disabled people. Exactly. exactly. So God was God been planting seeds. Yeah. So yeah. to you, to you, I'm teaching to me is just a, a natural, conversation natural conversation that I'm able to convey because I know it. Right. So I used to be a Sunday school teacher, too. Mm. Right. So a lot of it okay. is just is just natural. So God planted the seeds. He knows what he's about to do. That's yeah. what's up. It's, yeah. it's, it's crazy, man, how you, you talk about credit because growing up. You know, it was credit is bad. Don't have credit cards. Don't have credit cards, yeah, right? Yeah, Be careful. Yeah, put yeah to, man. Put to my grandmother, God rest her soul, she used to tell yeah. me, put the money in under your mattress. Mattress. Yeah. You know, don't. And now, like literally, in my at my age, I'm like, what? I've <laughs> been learning this wrong. I've been the learning whole it time. wrong the whole no time. time. Imagine oh. if your grandmother mm. taught you about credit, business credit, and how leaving the money in the bank is a bad thing. And that your money, um, the only thing that's supposed to be in your bank account is the emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Banks were created for transactional purposes only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. The rest of the bread is supposed to be moving and shaking and growing. And the real estate, um, what's the new thing now? Crypto is supposed to be right. in something else. Put it in the insurance policy so that it continues to roll over time. And right. put the trust as the beneficiary of the policy so that your right. kids get the, like it. Imagine if you knew that just 30 years ago endless, or 20 bro. years ago. Endless, wow. endless, endless. 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 So what, o what other businesses do you have? You said you had other LLCs. What other um, LLCs do you have? So, of trucking, course, I heard. So, yeah. So, mentorship is Bella Sloan Academy is one LLC. Trucking, Olivia Monroe, I named that one after my daughter, right? So, that's the trucking company. You got the credit repair company. You got the business funding company. You got the book company where we do authorships. You got um uh dodge consulting where that's that's the portion where i go out and speak so people invite me to speak so they gotta pay me and you know so you gotta pay a different llc for that because we don't mix the money up right because i i need my all my llc's doing different things so we're okay. able to write different things off hashtag sure. donald trump mm. or i'm able to get different lines of credit because i have seven eight llc's making money now so okay. any type of time i come up with an idea the the, the clothing merch Right, assets only or execute or audit your circle. I had to turn that into a clothing brand. Oh, that's another LLC right. or whatever. So, because then the, the the money from that, it's another LLC that makes money. So, if I want, I can show taxes to get even more money. So, wow. um, LLCs is money to me. Mm. The more LLCs I have, that means that's the more money I can make. Wow, powerful. Are your are your daughters? You have two daughters. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. Are they into? Like um, well, the youngest one, uh, Olivia. Yeah, Olivia. Olivia is the youngest. Okay. Bella's the oldest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you, you, I remember watching one of your Instagrams and you saying, "Own nothing, control yeah. everything. Control everything. Don't put anything in your name. Don't put anything in your so name." So now people are talking about putting their kids, um, down as, um, employees. Employees. Employees on like the that. business. Right. 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 So now, at what age, like, does Olivia and Bella, you know, is it a sixteen now? Right now. now, let me tell you why. So uh, we went to Disney World last year, right? 
Um, and whenever I'm very strategic with mine, because these are the tax laws, right? I'm very strategic with mine. So my children are definitely my employees. Oh, they can't work. They can't do nothing. You're scamming. No, I'm not. Um, when I post Bella Sloan or Olivia Moreau, and they're next to me, or I'm doing one of my golf cart poppy videos or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And they're next to me. Um, I turned the Disney trip into a business trip. That's number one, right? Because now it's educational. Doing a live from wonderful Disney World. Blah, 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 blah. Let's learn something together, right? So now it's a business trip. And then if I take a picture with my children wearing the merch, right? What's mm. that? They're not my what? My models. Wow. And I have to pay my models. Mm. They don't work for free, right? Mm. And that money goes into account for them, right? That's generating money. So when they are 16, 17, 18, forget about the tax write-off that they get right now. But when they're 16, 17, 18, the bank has seen that money has been going into this account. Paychecks. Mm. right so that means my kids have a job so when they're 17 18 yeah can you give them some credit so i'm gonna build up their personal credit profile then right. their business credit profile but it starts right now so they're gonna have 10 15 years of income coming in it's a different game powerful different game drop, y'all, y'all heard that drop the mic on that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different that's game. powerful Ooh, yeah man. so um, they're gonna have a 10 15 year head right. start than your child does wow right that's powerful stuff man wow mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's time for the sock passe jar. Yeah. Okay. R- random question. We want to tell you about this. Okay. Random question. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Random question. Uh, just pick one. Uh, okay. It's a fun question. It's a fun question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All it's right. Not, we get a lot crazy. of people stumped on these questions, by All the right. way. But let's see what you let's see what you got. All right. Do you have a baby mom? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, wait. Like, put that in there. <laughs> nah. the, oh, oh. <laughs> it says, um, where do you see yourself in three years? This mm. is good. I got to do this on my podcast. This is yeah. good. I'm going to steal yeah, this. Yeah, one. Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Where do you see yourself in three years? So in three years, um, um, 2025, uh, right? Mm-hmm. So number one, I'm definitely going to be stepping down from Bella Sloan at the end of this year, right? Because it's about growth. Right? I can't do this forever. You have to know how to pass the baton, um, especially empower black, amazing women around me. So in order for Bella Sloan and Olivia Monroe to run their own companies, they need to see that their dad put a powerful black woman in charge. So shout out to Damaris, who's going to be Smart. taking over. So that's number one. I'm going to be stepping down. Number two, um, the businesses that I have are giving me a lot of, not money, are giving me a lot of time. So because my businesses are giving me a lot of time now, right, and I'm walking into the the act two of my life, right, act two of my life will be more give back, right, where my give back is education, mm-hmm. right? I got to get this message out to as many people because mm-hmm. that's what my impact is going to be, mm-hmm. right? That's what my legacy is going to be, right? Teaching more, doing more mentorship, more seminars, traveling more, mm-hmm. and touching more people, that way. So that's what I want because three years is a short term. Mm-hmm. So stepping down at Bella Sloan and being able to 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 get out here and be a Grant Cardone and be a Gary V yeah. in my little niche and teaching people how to be free. Wow. No. That's 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 let people know where they can find you to kind of dig deeper into your course and you know know more about business credit okay absolutely so again um herman yeah, dulcy yeah that's your camera right there. herman dulcy um you can find me on instagram haitian underscore ceo that's the personal page why am i giving you the personal page because i'm just some guy on the internet go do your research on me mm. right look look through that page go all the way down go as far back as you need to go so this so you know this didn't just start We've been we've been doing this. Actually, I did. I did, I did right. I did. See, <laughs> so did, so yeah, yeah. I, I'm very purposeful with yeah, my yeah. documentation. Document document the process because mm-hmm. when you find somebody, you got to do your research on them, right? There's True. no private. I'm not posting no private jets, no luxury cars, no Rolls Royces. People will be very surprised that I do have a Rolls Royce and a Ferrari. I haven't posted it one time. Why? Because I use it to make me money. It's in L.A. right now, and it's on it's on Toro, and I'm probably gonna sell it. You'll probably never see it, mm-hmm. right? So I want you to see receipts, not these things that really don't matter. Or you can find me on my business page, um, Bella underscore Sloan underscore Enterprises on Instagram. Same thing on Twitter. Check us out on our YouTube channel where we have classes. We post our lives there, Bella Sloan Enterprises. And you can, if you want to reach out to us and my team so we can be of support to help you with your credit, mentorship, or getting your business funded, you can email us at info at bellasloanenterprises.com. Beautiful. So can I say one thing? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Two years ago, um, I'm following um, big business, right? right? right. Mm-hmm. And so 
I I think you guys did a seminar in Philly or something right. like that mm-hmm. just before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And then um, some personal happened, and then I'm like looking on to um, to his page, and then you came along as well. And then I was like, dang, I need I need help with this credit, you mm-hmm. know, with fixing my credit and mm-hmm. you know all kinds of stuff. So, and then. I'm listening to this radio station. Okay. And the dude is spitting game. And I was like, oh, okay. It's either I go with this guy. This guy. Right, right. Or this guy. Yeah. So I went with the other guy. Uh And I'm kicking myself right now. (laughs) (laughs) Bruh. I'm kicking myself. Like, because I spoke to, I had a 15 minute consult. Uh, I believe you guys offer like a 15, 15 minute, minute free consultation. Free right. consultation. Right, right. I spoke to a female. <laughs> right, right, right. Like chill. Oh, I remember sitting in the parking man. lot at Roosevelt Field. Yeah. And I'm talking to her. Right. And literally the next day I listened to this guy. He came on the show and all these guys are talking about him. And I was like, oh, you know what? Let me just go ahead. Right, right. I was like, <laughs> well, Rob, now you know. Now you know. <laughs> Like now you know. Like two years now you later, know. I was like, damn. And that's why it's very important to my brand that um, um, you don't have to make a hard decision like that. So that when you go and you go do research on me, it's a it's an easy sell. I don't right. I don't sell myself anymore. I will change your life. Speaking about your brand, Rob told me a, a unique story yesterday. He was like, yo, I've been, I went all the way down to his <laughs> first post on IG. Wow. And yeah. he was only getting like four likes, five yeah, likes, and bro. he just grew it organically. Yeah, and then now it's just yeah. like, yeah, 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 you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah. and that's a you beautiful back, thing. Nah, you went back, bro. Nah, you went back. I was just like, no, nah, because I- But you like, believed in, you I, know what I'm saying? believed yeah, in what I, I was see, saying. Like, I, it's not just you coming on a podcast. It's like yeah. you, like just like like Jude and yourself mm-hmm. and other people. It was just like, yeah. yo, like I, I feel like I grew up in the same household with this dude. <laughs> you know I, what I'm saying? I can yeah. relate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I nah, can relate. It's, it's, yeah. it's deep, and but. I think I applaud y'all, man. Like because yeah. we are a platform. Yeah, we're a podcast. Whatever we did, what we had to do in the community, but there's so much more work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you guys are like. The, the, I was I call y'all the OGs, bro. Thank like, you, man. I appreciate that. Continue, bro. Yeah. Continue success, bro. And yeah. I, I, I mean, however we can help to to promote and do what we need to do to promote this, and Definitely. you know, we could give like affiliate links. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, people to say, hey, Team Sock by say, hey, I know Team Sock by yeah. say, right? Get a, yeah, get a man, nice for discount. sure, or whatever. You know, what I'm saying? absolutely. But all jokes aside, like seriously, like I, I applaud all of you guys, man, because you guys are our mentors. We didn't have this growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, right. Exactly. You know, my parents didn't have, you know, people like yourselves. Definitely. Uh, and and nah, keep going, bro. I appreciate nah, you, man. Sure. Thank you. Keep pushing through, man. Yeah. yeah it took is... it took what two, three, four months. I'm right. reached out to you on, on IG. <laughs> yeah. But you said I want any way I could be a help of service. Right. And I was like, yo, this dude is official. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. and you made it happen in this yeah. weather. <laughs> really appreciate it, yeah, bro. No, we gotta I'm, come out to Philly. Absolutely, man. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm proud of the the platform. I appreciate because you. you know, um, when you share your platform with somebody like I remember when Jude invited me out to the Brooklyn Bank, or when you, when somebody brings you onto their platform, there's a trust there, right? Yeah. So you want to respect the platform and the people that trust you, right? right to mm-hmm. bring me on it. So I wanted to thank you. I'm very honored by that. Oh, no doubt, right? no doubt, no doubt. Appreciate bro. you, man. Rob, any last housekeeping items? Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good show? Um, it was oh, a great it was show, a good man. show. All right, good. It was, awesome it was, show. It was awesome. It was awesome. awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, super, 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 super shout out to Jude Bernard and the family. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's in the, the building. Bank. He's, he's in, in the building. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Y'all see this place? Appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? We got chandeliers. in the Beautiful. Gorgeous in here. And, man, like, we really appreciate you guys. And we... Uh, whatever, man. Let's let's connect. Let's do something. You know, for, for big, sure, for something, sure, for, for sure. Like yeah. I, I, that's my vision. Like I tell this guy, I wake up in the morning. I'm like, bro, bro, <laughs> yo, I got an idea. <laughs> you got an idea, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, but um, this is just the beginning. And uh, remember, this is the Team Sock Passe podcast. And subscribe, share, comment below. All all of um, Herman's and Haitian CEOs information will be below. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, man, I'm check us it. out. Team Sock Passe on YouTube. Yep. Um, on our website, Team Sock Passe. All all social media platforms, Team Sock Passe. Thanks again, Herman Dulce. Absolutely. Bella yep. Sloan Enterprises. He, this is just the beginning of the just beginning. The beginning. Yes, yeah. Yes, all right. Yes. Team Sock Passe. We Peace. out. Thank you. All right. Wow, bro. Beautiful. And cut. Only beat, 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 beat.